I'm going to explain to you what Dynasty Fantasy Football is, how it's played, and strategies to help you win. If you've never played Dynasty before, or you've been playing a couple years and want to step your game up, then this video is going to be for you. What's going on, Fantasy Football fans? I'm your host, Hussein the Brain, and you're watching the couch. This is my introduction to fantasy football, dynasty leagues, and dynasty strategy. If you're into fantasy football like I am, I highly recommend you subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so you won't miss anything. If you're brand new to the entire concept of fantasy football, I highly recommend you watch my how to play fantasy football video. You should see it over here, over here, and I'm gonna put a link in the description. So watch that before you watch this one. Let's start off with the number one most important thing before getting into a dynasty any fantasy sports dynasty league and that's to have a good solid group of guys a lot of these tips i'm gonna give do apply to redraft format season long leagues like you know one one season but it's going to apply even more to dynasty leagues especially this one so you want to have a good group of guys that's going to be fun to play with, that you're not going to get into a lot of fights, that's going to have integrity, be trustworthy, you know, pay their fees, uh, have a good commissioner that, that pays the league prizes once the league is over, so on and so forth. Of course, but in a dynasty league, it's going to be way worse, right? Would you rather uh, live with a bad roommate for one football season or would you rather live with a bad roommate for 11 years? Because that's what a dynasty league is. Just imagine it's going to last 10 years, maybe longer. Uh, you're in it for the long run. It's not just a one year and then you're done or one fantasy football season and you're done. So if you have owners in your league that you can't tolerate, it's going to be way worse in a dynasty league. So find a group of guys that's going to be in it for the long haul, that's going to be reliable and that's not too hard to get along with. Let's start off by defining what a dynasty league is. A dynasty league is a long-term league where you carry over most of your roster from the end of one season to the beginning of the following season. If you've ever heard of a keeper league, it's very similar, but in keepers, you only keep about one to three players, not too many. In a dynasty league, you're usually keeping just about your entire team and it's going to be a lot of players. A typical dynasty draft is 30 rounds or 20 rounds, something like that. So you're going to be keeping like 20 players for a long time, at least until next year. The first year of your dynasty league, you're going to have what's called a startup draft. That's when you basically just draft your team. Then the following years after that, you will have what's called a rookie draft. That's typically five rounds. I think I just had one that was four rounds and this is where you draft strictly rookies. What's a little bit different other than you're drafting rookies in a, in a rookie draft is that it's typically a linear draft so it's not a snake format. It's more like the real NFL and you'll see Dynasty is a lot of real NFL aspects. It's like running a real NFL franchise. You're going to be having a linear draft and usually the worst team gets to pick first and the best team, the team that finished first place, that won the Super Bowl, is going to be drafting last. And remember, it is typically a linear format. It is not a snake format. I had to learn that the hard way. Some more information about rookie drafts. In our league, we're going to be doing a lottery for the bottom six teams, the teams that did not make playoffs. That just makes it a little bit more interesting. Compared to the NBA lottery, we're going to have quote unquote ping pong balls and the team that has the worst record will get more ping pong balls therefore having a higher chance of getting that first overall pick also another just small nuance other leagues like to do they like to separate their startup draft with their rookie draft their first year i recommend just having the whole thing in one draft but it's more like personal preference i just like it to be simple but some people even their first year they separate they do their startup and then maybe a month later or a week later they have their rookie draft. Me, I just like the whole thing all in one, one go. In a dynasty format that's 20 rounds or you have about 25 players or some cases up to 30 players, waivers are going to be thin. But this is a year round thing. See, waivers and redraft only last, what, like 16 weeks? And that's if you're, you know, you made it all the way to the end. But in Dynasty, you can add a player right now. You can add a player next month. Uh, you can add a player in August, in January, in March. Like, it really doesn't matter. There is no off season. There's time to relax more, but periodically, 
checking the waivers is another good tip. You never know what you might find. Sometimes players get dropped. Sometimes players get dropped because they retire. Then they unretire. You never know. People ask me what platform they should put their Dynasty League on. And I always recommend Sleeper app. That's my number one go-to. It has the most options. It's free. And one thing that's really cool for this modern age, why I'm recommending Sleeper app, is that they built the app out first. So it's made for mobile, like 100%. The app is great, uh, it's mobile friendly. I mean, it's literally, it's mobile first and then the desktop looks more like the mobile app. So if you got uh, people that are on the go or people that are more mobile users and not uh, desktop users, not computer users, this is definitely the app for you. And nowadays everything's on the phone. I personally love the computer, but even when I'm on the go, it's good to have an app or I'm just chilling on the couch, whatever, watching TV and I could just, you know, take out the app. It's really convenient. I've heard a lot of good things about Flea Flicker as well. It's a good place to play, except if you want to use it on your phone, because I've heard it sucks when it comes to mobile uh, and using it on your phone. That's why I can't recommend it number one. Another site is MFL. That's short for My Fantasy League. This is a little bit of an old school site. It's very reliable, very professional, and extremely, extremely customizable. Like when I say it's customizable, I mean, you can do dang near anything. So if you're running, like like I was in a charity league and we were all, pay, it was like uh, 48 expert accounts on Twitter. It was cool because you can show that league off. You can change the colors. You can, I think you can put banners and links and you know, just make this crazy tournament with crazy brackets pretty much anything you can imagine you could do. Mobile wise, it's not that great, but it is very reliable, very trustworthy. A lot of the top experts and old school accounts, big companies, they use it. And like I said, we, we've ran tournaments on it. Big leagues, we usually do on MFL. The only downside to that, other than what I said, is that it is paid. So this is more for super serious users. If not, you could go with Yahoo. I've heard a lot of good things. Never played Dynasty on Yahoo. We did play Dynasty on ESPN that's another one I can recommend to you guys but we went from ESPN to sleeper app because sleeper had just so many more options for dynasty and a lot of people like the app another feature in dynasty is the taxi squad feature this could complicate things even more like there's a lot of nuances a lot of different settings in dynasty and it could be a little bit overwhelming and this could further complicate things but i highly recommend you do it it's pretty fun it's like running a real nfl franchise uh, in terms of you got to start out with a big roster so let's say you got 30 players on your team and then by preseason week four or right before the regular season kicks off you got to cut down your 30 player roster to 25 players and that's essentially what a taxi squad is the players on your taxi squad squad can only be rookies unless there's some setting I'm not aware of and then you just have to you know get rid of your taxi squad or make it shorter um, I mean there's just endless settings that you can customize but just so you know that if you do have a taxi squad that's usually what's going to be the case you got a big roster and by certain time or cut dates you got to make it into a smaller roster if you have no experience being a commish or haven't played dynasty before I highly recommend you do not be a dynasty commish there's a headache you have just like it just like the the first tip about having annoying people in your league the the headache you're gonna have is gonna last year round it's gonna be very tough and people are gonna be mad at you because you don't know what the heck you're doing so if you've never been a commish and never played in a dynasty league do not be a dynasty commissioner it is a lot of work and i suppose i mean if the league fees are really small or if it's you find a free dynasty league i guess it's not as bad but still just i'm just giving a fair warning okay you can be a commish okay but don't say i didn't warn you one strategy i love to use is to heavily value age so when you're drafting in your startup dynasty league not so much the rookie draft uh, i mean i don't really pay too much attention to the age of rookies but it's still worth noting because some rookies come into the league at 24 um you know just much older and some come in super young like uh i forgot who it was but just recently someone broke the record as the youngest player to be drafted so you got to pay attention to age but especially in a startup league because if you're drafting uh, a very old player you know you're they call that a rental right you're only going to be able to play him for one or two years and you want to build a dynasty for the future essentially so i heavily factor in age now what i've learned i've been doing research and talking to a lot of people 
So um, I've actually learned that a lot of people do what I did. So it did work out for me during my drafts because only a couple of players were ignored like Larry Fitzgerald and AJ Green fell a little bit. But other than that, um, nobody cared about young players. Like, so I just racked up all the young players and I did very well. So I had a good team for the first year and for the future. But now that I've done more research, I know that actually most people do what I did. So you're going to have drafts more than likely. Okay, Every draft is different. Every league is different. You're going to more than likely be in a draft where there's people like me who overvalue age. So you're going to have to uh, zig where others zag. Like you cannot, everyone can't be going for young players. So if a bunch of 21 year olds are getting drafted in the first round, you got to go, you know what? I'm going to go for win now mode. Just decide if you're going to win later or win now. And if everyone's going for age, young players to win for later, you should pivot and go with older players. Not necessarily, you know, you don't want to draft a bunch of old geezers on your team that can't play. I'm just saying go for a win now mode and care less about age than other players because winning a championship now, hey, that's a championship. Like it, it's it's probably even better than winning it later. You can trade, you can do a lot of things in, in Dynasty. It's good to note the lifespan of each position when it comes to their career. Quarterbacks last the longest. We see a lot of really good quarterbacks that play at age 35 and nowadays are even playing up to age 40. It's pretty incredible. This isn't uh, the case with other positions. Running back, they have the shortest careers. Uh, so you just want to keep that in mind. That's why in a redraft league, a lot of people, what do they do? They they don't, they wait for a quarterback. But man, if you're in a dynasty league, you may want to go for that quarterback if you have a strong, strong conviction in them. You know, maybe they're the number one overall pick. You love them in college and you just need a quarterback in your league. Like, don't be afraid to go get that quarterback. If you think it's going to be an MVP caliber player, you know, possible Hall of Famer, you know, have that 15-year career, that's the type of quarterback you do want. Not saying to, you know, go out, go way out your way and get him. Hey, but maybe. I mean, if you got paid in Manning in Dynasty, you'd be cool, right? As far as running backs go, it's pretty similar to redraft leagues. They're still scarce. They're still the most valuable position, so you do likely need running back. I don't, I don't see how you're going to do good in your league if you don't have good running backs. And they usually do go off the board pretty fast, just like in all other fantasy football leagues. When you're thinking about which wide receiver to draft, you're going to need to go just a little bit more into detail than in a redraft league. Who's their quarterback? I mean, is their quarterback 40 years old? Like, who's going to replace that quarterback? Are they more of a safe pick? Are they more of an upside pick? You want to have a good balance. You just want to process more information. That's basically what's going on here. So yeah, you, you think about who their quarterback is, what offense it is in redraft, but now the quarterback's age comes to mind, you know, where the team is headed, maybe even the coach, maybe even the system, who the backup quarterback is, the wide receiver's age. Um, are they going to be... You you know good now this year or later like you have to process all that for tight ends i mean we get hyped up about two tight ends every single year in the draft two rookie tight ends and how many times have they panned out like twice ever so just a fair warning if you already have a tight end you don't need to go reaching for a tight end just beware of rookie tight ends look this is a mistake that's been made so many times you get a bunch of rookie tight ends you're so hyped and then you're like oh i don't i this guy's just wasting roster spot it's awesome if you can hit on a rookie tight end but it's just so difficult just virtually no rookie tight ends do anything their first year okay so you're thinking okay what about their second year or third year yeah they can do good but that's when other people make this mistake and you trade for those same tight ends. Because once that player just drafted a tight end in the first round and they were terrible, just irrelevant their first year, you could probably go and trade for them for super cheap instead of wasting a first round a rookie draft pick on a tight end. So now you're playing, you get, you get in the Hana dynasty, right? So you're watching college and, and looking at rookies. You're going to get excited when it comes to some rookies and some candidates before the NFL draft. But one thing you have to stay disciplined about is you have to heavily factor draft capital. Draft capital is how early a player gets drafted in 
the NFL draft, the real NFL draft. So if I'm choosing between a player that's get like like I have two players in mind and it's it's pretty close and it's my turn to draft. One player got drafted in round two and another player got drafted in round four in the NFL draft. You got to go with the player that's drafted in round two. Draft capital does matter. Also be disciplined when it comes to opportunity versus talent. You always got to take opportunity over talent. I mean, there is a fine line. You know, these are strategies. Like it's not like a one rule fits all type of thing. But uh, just again with the same example, you got two players, one you think's more talented, but one you know is going to be a day one starter and get his opportunities right away. Like that team never had a running back in 10 years and they just drafted a running back with a top four pick. Go get that top four pick running back because uh, rather than the, the guy with upside and talent, because you just don't want your roster full of 10, 11, 12 players that are just not doing anything that were really good in college, but never just really had the opportunity to, to shine. They never had the opportunity to make it to the top of the depth chart. Some redraft leagues do this, but it's much more popular in Dynasty. You can trade draft picks. You can even trade picks and players in the middle of a draft so while the draft is going just like the real nfl draft so one thing to keep in mind if things don't go your way during the draft like oh oh crap i needed a quarterback it's a super flex league like i didn't draft one don't panic and trade away all your assets to go and get that one quarterback do not do that this is a rookie mistake that a lot of people told me they have made and uh, just just don't panic. It's still early. You never know what's going to happen during the season. Just stay calm, stay collective, know your settings and come prepared. If things don't go your way just for one round, just be patient. Your team will do good. A lot of teams, like how many times have we seen a team that looks stacked do bad or some you know injury happens and vice versa, a team that didn't do so good ends up being decent and making playoffs. It happens every year. So. Uh, you know, in redraft leagues, I say don't make any panic picks. That applies for this. In dynasty leagues, you don't don't make panic picks, but also don't make panic trades while the draft is going on. Another tip, I would recommend starting a group chat, whether it be on Facebook Messenger or a 10 person group text message group chat or Instagram, whatever you guys use, Discord, I don't know. Wherever, just uh, I recommend setting up a group chat. That way it's much more fun. You guys can DM each other one-on-one, uh, -on -one, you know, if you want to talk about trades and, uh, the, you know, the commissioner can talk about whatever he wants to talk about. So group chat is always good in, in fantasy leagues, but much more important in a dynasty league when things have to be discussed from year to year. And hey, sometimes owners do have to drop out whatever personal reasons they move. I don't know, whatever, ex you know, fill in the excuse. And sometimes you have to sell that team off i mean no one's probably buying it necessarily but you know you have to convince you know some other person that's not in the league to take that team like oh hey uh you get juju smith schuster with this team uh, do, do you want to be in our dynasty league yes please i'd love to be in your dynasty league big shout out to the dynasty drafters podcast for helping me step up my dynasty game hopefully if they allow me i'll be able to be a guest on their podcast once again sometime soon maybe i'll have them on my podcast as well make sure you like this video or dislike it subscribe to the youtube channel by hitting this white couch icon we also have a second youtube channel fantasy couch podcast subscribe to that as well also check out my other strategy and how to videos to help step up your fantasy sports game i have a whole series of them so check them out too see you on the next one